Okay, here's a theorem that connects uh, Euclidean domains to principal ideal domains. Theorem. So that says a Euclidean domain is a principal ideal domain. That's it. So let's prove this. Okay, let D be a Euclidean domain. So every Euclidean domain has a f mapping. So V A. Uh, so mapping from D except for the zero element to non-zero, uh, non-negative. Uh, integers and let I be any uh, ideal of D. So we, we want to show that this ideal it's an it, it can be any ideal of D is a principal ideal domain. Okay so if this ideal is a uh, zero ideal then it is uh, it is a principal ideal domain right so it can be expressed as actually uh, so zero can be expressed as uh, Uh, D and 0. So 0 times any element is 0. So this is a principal ideal domain. So suppose it's not a 0 ideal. Then we choose a, an element of B by this operation arg mean of v of x where x varies over i so this means we pick an element the element of i the ideal i such that the value of v of uh, x is the minimum so if v of x is the minimum that element x is assigned to be the element b Okay. Then we want to show that uh, the idea we want to show uh, this ideal can be expressed as dB. So this is what we want to show. Okay. So first of all, uh, since I is an ideal, we have uh, dB is a subset of i right because by the definition of ideal b is in ideal and for any element x in the in the euclidean domain d then xb is an element of ideal so this is uh, the definition of ideal right so therefore uh, db is a subset of i i Okay, now we want to show the opposite inclusion. We want to show uh, i is a subset of db. Then we can show uh, this equality, right? So let a be any element of i. And we want to show this a is included in, uh, is an element of db. Okay. Uh, so since D is a Euclidean domain, uh, we can express this A as uh, BQ plus R, where Q and R are some elements of D. 
Okay, and where this R, uh, where R is either zero or if R is not zero, then uh, V of R is less than V of B. Okay, but from this equation we have R is equal to A minus B Q. And, and since A belongs to I and B belongs to I and B times any element of D uh, uh, B Q is an element of ideal because of uh, the property of the ideal. Okay, so an ideal is an additive group, so therefore this also belongs to the ideal I. So this R is an element of I. Okay, and if R is not zero, then V of R is less than V of B. But this is a contradiction. Because the way we chose B is such that uh, the value of uh, V of B is minimum. So from this choice, we can, uh, by definition of B, we have B is less than or equal to uh, V of X uh, for all X in the ideal. Okay. But uh, if we assume R is not zero, then that uh, is that condition is violated. Therefore, this is a contradiction. Therefore, R must be equal to zero. So therefore, if R is equal to zero, then we have a a is equal to B Q, which means this is an element of D B. So therefore. Uh, I is a subset of DB. Therefore, I is equal to DB. Uh, so this is a principal ideal. So we have shown that any ideal of a Euclidean domain is a principal ideal. Therefore, a Euclidean domain is a principal ideal. So we are done. A uh, few examples. The set of integers is a Euclidean domain, as we have seen before. Therefore, every ideal of uh, this uh, Euclidean domain is of the form of, so every ideal. So Euclidean domain is a principal uh, ideal domain. So every ideal of Z is of the form of uh, N Z. So this is a principal ideal. Right? Uh, by the way, this means uh, N times X, where X is an integer. So any ideal of uh, this ring can be expressed as an ideal of the form of this, so multiple of some integer n. And another, our favorite example, is the polynomial ring of x uh, over f, where f is a field. Then this is a uh, principal ideal domain because we have seen that this is a Euclidean domain, so it is a principal ideal domain. Okay, the next theorem is a theorem that is similar to a previous theorem. We proved for uh, uh, 
unique factorization domains. Okay, in a principal ideal domain, every irreducible elements element uh, irreducible element is prime. Previously we proved a similar theorem where uh, instead of principal uh, ideal domain we uh, set a unique factorization domain. But here we prove for PID. Okay, let's prove this. And let D be a principal ideal domain and let P uh, is be an element, be an irreducible element. And suppose, so we want to show it is a prime element, so suppose to show that suppose P divides AB where A and B are some elements of D. Okay, We want to show that uh, P divides A or P divides B. Okay, So if P divides A then we are done. So if, uh, let's suppose P does not divide A. Then we want to show that P divides B. So to show that, uh, let C uh, be an element be such that such that it is a common divisor of A and B, uh, P. Okay, and since P is irreducible. From here, we uh, can see that C is an associate of one or P. Okay, so suppose. P is an associate of P. So, uh, because either this or this, so suppose this is the case. Then, what this means, uh, sorry, suppose C is an associate of P, of course. Uh, sorry. So, what this means is that C can be written as a product of P and some unit U. So, unit means there is some element. So if u is an unit is a unit, then there is another unit v such that the product becomes one. So if we multiply this, uh, we can see that uh, c v is equal to p. So this means p divides c. Okay. So this means uh, from combining with this then P divides A, which is a contradiction. Because we are assuming that P does not divide A. But uh, if we assume uh, C is an associate of P, then that leads to the conclusion that P divides A. So this is, a uh, this is false. Therefore, uh, C must be an associate of 1 that means, uh, in other words, C is a unit. Now, consider the ideal, which is a sum of two ideals, uh, principal ideals, uh, dA plus dP. Since D is a principal ideal, this sum is also a principal ideal, let's say d, lowercase d. 
But according to a lemma uh, we have proved previously, then this d, oh sorry, this d uh, must be one uh, because where uh, d is the greatest common divisor of a and p. But uh, we have just seen that uh, <coughs> uh, this co greatest common divisor must be uh, a unit. So that means this is 1. Right? So any common divisor of A and P must be a unit. So therefore, the greatest common divisor cannot be uh, greater than 1. I mean, this 1 is not a number. This is the, the identity element of D. So well, anyway, so this is the greatest common divisor. Therefore, this is actually equal to D itself. So what this means is that there exist some elements x and y such that uh, xA plus yP is equal to 1. If we multiply uh, both sides by b, we have uh, x a b plus y p b equal to b. Okay, and by assumption, p divides a b, and clearly, uh, p divides y. P, B, because there is a factor P here. Therefore, so P can divide the left hand side. Therefore, P divides B. And that is what we wanted to show. Therefore, uh, P is a prime. And we are done. And then I give a, a simple corollary of this theorem without a proof. Uh, let D be a principal ideal domain and let P be an irreducible element. And suppose, uh, okay. so if uh, P divides A1, A2, and so on up to AN, where uh, these are elements of D, then uh, there exists some J. among n such that p divides aj. Okay, so that means p divides one of these elements. So this can be uh, easily proved from the previous theorem. Finally, we would like to prove that uh, every principal, principal ideal domain is a unique factorization domain. And previously we have proved that every Euclidean domain is a principal ideal domain. So it follows that every Euclidean domain is a unique factorization domain. But before that we need to prove uh, the following lemma. So the lemma is uh, let's say we have a principal ideal domain and ideal domain and A be an element of D which is non zero and non unit. Then, 
A is uh, the product of finite number of irreducible elements. So that means uh, A can be expressed as something like this. So A is P1, P2, and so on, Pn, and all of these are irreducible elements. OK, let's prove this. We prove by contradiction. So that means, uh, suppose A cannot be uh, expressed as, as, a, as the product of finite, irre finite number of irreducible elements. Then, uh, then, A itself is not irreducible. Okay, so because if it is irreducible, it can it can be considered as a product of one irreducible element. Okay, so uh, A cannot be irreducible in this case. So that means uh, we can express A as a product of A1 times B1, where A1 and B1 are not associate of 1 or A. So what this means is that uh, if we consider the principal ideal, dA, then this is a proper subset of the principal ideal, a1. Now, if we look at this, uh, we should assume that either a1 or b1 Uh, is not uh, not the product of finite number of irreducible elements. Because if uh, if both of them are the product of finite number of irreducible elements. That means A is also the product of a f of finite number of uh, irreducible elements. So this is a contradiction. So at least one of these, A1 or B1, is not uh, is not the product of finite number of irreducible elements. So suppose A1 is such an element. So A1 cannot be uh, expressed as a product of finite number of reducible elements, then we apply the same logic. Uh, we apply uh, apply the same argument so A1 can be expressed as a product of A2 times something where A2 is not uh, is not an associate of A1 or 1. So we have uh, A1, this uh, principal ideal is not, is a 
proper subset of A2. So we can uh, continue this argument over and over to have a sequence of principal ideals. So uh, that means we have uh, DA1, DA, which is a proper subset of DA1, which is a proper subset of DA2, which is a proper subset of D, uh, DA3, and so on. So this can continue indefinitely. So let's define. I as the infinite union of such principal ideals D A N. Then this uh, then this is again a principal ideal because D is a principal ideal domain. So there exists some uh, element C in the D such that uh, this ideal, but by the way this is an ideal because uh, the union of ideals principle, union of ideals is an ideal. So this is an ideal and since D is principal ideal domain this is again a principal ideal so we can express in this way. However, C is an element of DC, so therefore C must belong to uh, one of these principal ideals for some K. Okay, but what this means is that, uh, so what this means. Uh, DC is a subset of DAK. But uh, this is a prop this is a subset of I. But DC is I itself. So what this means is that uh, we have I is equal to D A K but this implies that D A K is equal to D A K plus 1 is equal to D A K plus 2 and so on. So this contradicts that this these are proper subset. Uh, this these are this is a sequence of proper subsets of uh, these uh, ideals. So this is a contradiction. Therefore, uh, therefore our assumption was wrong, and our assumption was that uh, a cannot be expressed as the product of finite number of uh, irreducible elements. Therefore, uh, A is the product of finite number of irreducible elements. And we are done. Finally, we can prove the following theorem, that is, every principal ideal domain is a unique factorization domain. Okay, so let's prove this. So let D be a principal ideal domain, and let A be an element which is non-zero and non-unit. So by the previous uh, lemma, we can we may express A as a product 
of irreducible elements, finite number of irreducible elements. So let's write it as uh, p1, p2, and so on, up to pm, where pi is irreducible. i is from 1 to up to n. Okay, now in order to show that uh, this d is a unique factorization domain, we need to show that this factorization into irreducible elements is unique, I mean essentially unique. So suppose this same a can be expressed in a different way q1, q2, and so on, qn. So we need to show that this m is equal to n, this m is equal to this n, and by proper ordering uh, we need to show that p1 is associate of q1, q, uh, p2 is an associate of q2, and so on. Then we are done. Uh, of course, uh, those q i's are uh, 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 irreducible too. Now uh, we we can see that p one divides p a right. So, but a is equal to this product. So, p one divides this product. So p1 divides q1, q2, and so on, qn. But as we have seen before, in a principal ideal domain, uh, an irreducible element is also a prime element. So that, as a cor corollary to that uh, lemma, we can show that uh, p1 divides divides one of uh, these elements. So by relabeling uh, these uh, indexes, uh, so by reordering, uh, we may assume assume that p1 divides q1 and and by assumption p1 and q1 they are both irreducible so p1 q1 are irreducible so that means uh, we have uh, q1 equal to uh, p1 equal to q1 sum unit uh, where u is a unit. So we can write uh, this product p1, p2 and so on and pm as so replacing uh, Wait a minute. So uh, maybe we should write instead of this, but q1 is equal to p1u. Okay, but uh, either is okay because we can also multiply at the inverse of u, so it shouldn't be a problem. And uh, so we replace q1 here and p1u, q2, q3, and so on, qn. So we can cancel P1 here. Okay, so let's cancel. Now uh, let's define redefine uh, Q2 times U as Q prime, a Q2 prime. So let's remove this and we have this. And we can apply the same logic. So q prime two is u q two. 
by applying the same logic we can uh, uh, cancel p2 and q2 prime and so on and by uh, simple induction we prove that uh, by induction we prove that the claim is true uh, it follows that uh, that the uh, the pro the finite product is unique is essentially unique So we say essentially because it's not exactly, it may not be exactly unique because uh, there is a freedom of, uh, by the factor of units. So, so this one uh, can be different. So, but it's, it's not essential. So, so this difference is not essential. So that's why we say uh, they are identical, essentially identical. So, so this expression of a finite product is unique and we are done and of course as a corollary to this theorem uh, we can say that a Euclidean domain is a unique factorization domain so what this implies that if you have, if we can devise a, the division algorithm in one, in some integral domain, then that is a Euclidean domain. So if there is a division algorithm, that implies that we can factorize every element in a unique manner. So that's what this uh, corollary implies.